This lens is an interesting one. It's another 50 millimeter. However, this time it's a 50 millimeter f 1.2 and the price tag on this lens is incredibly low. So first and foremost, let's see how it comes packaged and then we'll get into the review. So there's not much to the packaging. It comes in a nice small box, gray cover. Inside there's some nice padding. The lens itself, a user manual, and front and rear lens caps. Now taking a closer look at the lens, first and foremost, it feels very heavy. It's a small lens, but it comes in at 336 grams, which for the size is a lot. It's all metal construction with a ton of glass, and I have to say, it feels nicely built. Along with your typical plastic rear lens cap, you get a front lens cap that is made out of metal. And interestingly, this one screws onto the front of the lens. At the back of the lens, you get an all metal mount as you would expect. No electronic connections because this is a manual only focused lens. Moving forward, you get that TT Artisan logo and a very, very smooth, very well damped focus wheel. Now the rotation on this is almost 180 degrees. It is just very premium feeling. There's no grittiness, no graininess whatsoever. It's one of the better manual focus rings that I've felt on an inexpensive lens. In front of the focus ring, you get a small aperture ring. It has distinct clicks, which is super duper nice. A nice change over the typical declicked aperture that you see on a lot of these lenses. Take a listen to this. The aperture goes from f1.2 all the way to f16. And as you move forward, you'll see a very large front lens element, very large piece of glass. It's a pretty busy lens from the front. You get a serial number, optics by DJ Optical, dropping another hit record, 50 millimeter f1.2, 52 millimeter filter thread, and TT Artisan. Looking through the lens, you'll see the 10 bladed aperture with rounded aperture blades. It just looks very, very nice as you rotate the aperture wheel from one side to the other. This lens has seven elements in three groups. It is designed specifically for APS-C censored cameras. So I have my A6100 here and you'll see that the finish on this lens matches the A6100 perfectly. It's that nice semi-glossy black color and the lens itself looks very good on the camera body. It's nice and compact, about the size of the Sony 35 millimeter f1.8. Just for fun, I tried this lens on my Sony a7, a full frame mirrorless camera, and this is the result, as you can see, a ton of vignetting. So this is not a lens that is designed for full frame. Now let's put it back on the a6100 and take a look at some sample photos and maybe a video or two. I didn't take a bunch of portraits because I was able to form an impression using this lens almost immediately. I took a handful of shots and it was very easy to tell how it performed. So let's take a look at some portraits. Ready, set, go. Now it's not gonna be the sharpest thing in the world. In fact, when it comes to sharpness, well, let's talk about that. Uh, what I did is I took this lens and I compared it directly to my Sigma 56 millimeter f1.4, which is, in my opinion, the sharpest lens 
you can buy for your APS-C sensored camera. And this is what you get side by side. This is wide open f1.2 on the TT Artisan versus wide open on the Sigma 56. And you can see immediately that the Sigma is definitely sharper. As you stop the TT Artisan lens down, however, it does get better. This is f1.4 and this is f2.8. At f2.8, it does get noticeably sharper. And here just for fun is F4 where it gets really, really sharp. Now, the surprise of this comparison was not that the Sigma is a better lens. Obviously it's $400, it's probably the best lens that you can buy at this point. Um, so I wasn't expecting this little inexpensive manual lens to beat it, but it was surprisingly sharp at f1.2, at least in the center. And for shooting casual portraits, I found that this lens was not bad at all. Using it was easy. Normally when I test a manual focus lens such as this, I tend to throw away a lot of my shots because they're slightly out of focus, because it's difficult to focus. With this lens, I found that I threw away very little of my shots. It really was a joy to use this lens out in the wild and that clicked aperture control is something else. Now, as far as chromatic aberration, that is where this lens definitely does struggle. Even in the center of the frame, wide open, you see a lot of chromatic aberration. I took a shot here of some trees and you could see there is quite a bit of chromatic aberration, purple fringing, some green fringing as well. As you stop this lens down, it gets a little bit better, but not much. You further stop it down, it gets a little bit better but really you don't start to see an improvement until you stop down to about F4 and beyond. So that is one of the downfalls I think of this lens. It does have quite a bit of chromatic aberration. In fact, side by side with the Sigma 56, you'll see how much better the Sigma 56 does at dealing with chromatic aberration as you compare it to this lens. However, when I look at flaring, it is well controlled. There is a little bit of distortion um, with this lens, but it's not bad at all. Nothing that I would have to say, oh, you have to go in and edit all of your photos as a result. And the bokeh, that is where things are really nice on this lens. The bokeh is super creamy. I would say it's very close, almost as good as the Sigma, not quite though. I am impressed. I wouldn't say go out there and replace all of your other portrait lenses. Ultimately, if you have something like the Sigma 60 millimeter F2.8 or the Sigma 56 1.4 for sure, even the Sony 50 millimeter F 1.8, uh, those are going to be better performers and they're going to offer autofocus and ultimately better optics. But this is an excellent lens if you're just starting to build up your collection or if you want to just step foot into playing around with manual lenses. I would say this is an excellent first manual lens to pick up. As usual, if you guys are interested in reading more specs about this lens or possibly buying it, I will leave links down in the description below. So definitely check those out. Uh, special thanks goes out to TT Artisans for sending this out uh, for review to me. And I think that is just about it. So let me know down in the comments what you guys thought of this lens and its performance. Always curious to read your comments. Thank you so much for all of your likes, all of your support. Stay tuned for more and have a nice day. Bye-bye.